everybody, how are you doing? In this web view, I have finally come back to the USA the first time in the entire season 6 so far. We are going to be looking at possibilities of improving the commuter railway system in the metropolitan New York area, specifically in Long Island. Long Island is home of, you guessed it, the Long Island Railroad which is the most used commuter railway system in the whole of North America. Now, the problem is, it is really underdeveloped. This entire portion right here is known as a main line. It sees 168,900 daily riders, and this is only a two-track segment between Floral Park and just east of the Wontog State Parkway. Not to mention that there are express trains and local trains running through this right here. Two tracks with express trains severely limits capacity, especially considering that it is 9.8 miles between Floral Park and just east of the Wontog State Park where the line finally widens to three tracks for the last two miles to Hicksville. There have been many debates on how can capacity be increased in this region. Perhaps the most talked about is constructing a third track along this segment here. There are many positives to that, but there are a lot of negatives, specifically how much it will infiltrate into people's properties, not to mention that all the five stations in purple will have to be reconstructed to accommodate the third track. I was thinking of another possible method, and before I say it's better, this is probably one of the hardest part of doing this. It's really easy for me to say this is the better solution. It's just my opinion. I don't live here, and obviously the people who live in this immediate area have a lot more knowledge about their immediately surroundings. But from what I know, I do think that routing the express trains along the existing Hempstead branch and continuing on to the Mitchellfield secondary and into a three mile long tunnel could be very beneficial to in minimizing the amount of downfalls, if you know what I mean. So express trains will go here on the two track existing segment while the local trains will continue to operate on the Hempstead branch. And the Hempstead branch does not see nearly as much service as a main line here. So rerouting these express trains on here will more evenly disperse the capacity along these two lines. After that, it continues on to the Mitchellfield secondary and into the tunnel until it goes to Hicksville. This tunnel is perhaps the most costly part of the entire project, but one needs to consider that this will see a lot of ridership compared to some of my high-speed rail projects, and some of those had multiple tunnels as long or longer than this. So three miles in the grand scheme of things comparatively is not all that bad. So before we get started with the WebView itself, let's go through the colors. I'm introducing a key right here so that you don't have to remember everything from what I say, but I'll say it nonetheless. Light blue is your friend. It means nothing has to be done. All crossings will remain as is. And here there's electrification as well. It's just here in the secondary where electrification will need to be added but it's two tracks nothing else next we have hot pink hot pink is upgrading the line so it has more tracks than there currently are so in the case of the Mitchellfield secondary these two portions right here only have one track they will each need to be upgraded to two tracks the segment between the Wontog State Parkway and Hicksville will have to be upgraded from three to four tracks. But it's important to note that the properties in this area are not nearly as close to the line as in the western sections, for example, New Hyde Park to Mineola. Next, we have green. Green is new alignments. Now, new alignments could be 10 to 15 mile long new stretches, but in this case, it's just new curve straightening sections. And new alignments actually mean new ground level alignments because we also have magenta, which is viaducts, new viaducts that to be constructed, and dark blue, which is new tunnels. Also, I'm going to introduce something else. Now, I know I said this is 
I'm not going to say this is the best solution, but this is just an opinion. I'm going to quickly go through all this right here. It's not going to take too long because I basically described the whole line. I'll just go through the geographies of each station and show you how the curve straightening will affect the line and how the communities will be affected by the running of the express trains. After that, I'll go through the existing line and go through how close the properties are to the line to almost say what are the possible upsides and downsides about doing this. So this is really a comparison video and just to give you another point of view and how Long Island Railroad's capacity problems can be solved. So without further ado, let's zoom in to Floral Park. So here we are at Floral Park. First I'm going to discuss where the high speed trains will go and how that will affect the operations of the Hempstead branch and what new things will have to be constructed. So Floral Park is where the four tracks of the main line to the west diverge into two tracks continuing along the main line in yellow and the other two tracks going onto the Hempstead branch right here. So there is a one to one ratio of tracks. However, the ratio of ridership is nearly 5 to 1. So this project aims to more evenly disperse all the railway traffic within these four tracks. And the, to allow the high, higher speed trains to run at 80 miles per hour, the southern two platforms will have to be shifted to Cantilever over Atlantic Avenue and Woodbine Court. I don't think any properties will be harmed by such a rerouting though. So this will just be changed. This will be a viaduct continuing until just east of Plainfield Avenue until it goes on to the existing line right here. There's a small new alignment here, but that will be on ground. Now this blue right here, as I said, that means nothing has to be changed. The express trains will continue to operate through and it's going to be much easier on the Hempstead branch because it sees a lot less traffic than the main line. So all the Hempstead trains will pass through these stations right here and the tracks as I said won't have to be changed. Also previously all the crossings we went through are not going to be grade separated. This is the only new grade separating crossing which is at Cherry Valley Avenue just west of Garden City. The reason is because the existing crossing is already grade separated but this is a place where curve straightening is required to allow trains to run at 80 miles per hour on the express routes. Now Garden City will have to be relocated and this is the entire station as opposed to part of the southern two platforms in Floral Park. But this is even easier than Floral Park because all that's here is a parking lot. So a parking lot may be infiltrated too but why not just move some of the spots to the south side near 6th street. It's much easier to do this than trying to relocate an entire road and possible businesses and homes. Not to mention that Garden City is the home of a lot of businesses and building a new station could serve as an economic beacon to the region. Now obviously only the local trains will stop here but the express trains will pass through here. Nevertheless the local trains under a new station will still see a lot of more potential along this line. So after Garden City the new curve straightening section will rejoin the existing section for just a little bit until at Franklin Avenue when the Mitchell Field Secondary starts. This right here though is only one track and non-electrified. So a second track will be added and the line will need to be electrified. Now you may be wondering, I'm upgrading it to two tracks here. Why not just do three on the other line? Look at how much space is available on each side. Yes, I understand there's a power line here, but to the south side, there's barely anything. So building a second track will be relatively easy. Speaking of that, there is a second track in certain portions just not all. As I said, all grade crossings will remain. The only exception is this one right here on the Quintin Roosevelt Boulevard because this is a bigger road and I do think building a viaduct over here could actually be worth it based on the traffic and the amount of trains that will be using this because the amount of trains will be lower than the main line. It's going to be splitting between the two lines. So Again, this is one track here and continues as one track until this tunnel right here. Now this is the start of the 3.2 mile long tunnel and this tunnel continues straight and then turns 
to the northeast under the Meadowbrook Parkway and continues northeast. Now this will be a cut and cover tunnel so no disruption will be made to these houses here. It will be approximately 40 feet below ground so that it won't have to deal with many foundations. And after 3.1 miles and just past the Wontog State Parkway, it rejoins the existing main line and that continues to Hicksville. This will have to be upgraded to four tracks, but the amount of land available on each side is much greater and also these are factories with parking lots. And as you'll see in a couple minutes, the existing main line passes through much denser environments than this. But this shows how the express trains will go. They will go along the Hempstead branch while the existing Hempstead branch trains will operate and then go on that other secondary and into a tunnel, bypassing all the stations on the main line between Floral Park and Hicksville. So that was the express trains. Now let's go through where the local trains will operate, which is, you guessed it, right back at Floral Park but on the other two tracks. Now in all honesty, I could have just started at Hicksville and gone back to Floral Park, but I'm starting at Floral Park to serve more as a better comparison because it's going in the same direction as the express trains, but this is where the local trains go. So this is to show where the local trains will continue to operate and where currently both the local and express trains operate. And this is also the portion that has been subject to three track extensions. So. As you can see, some of these houses come really close to the tracks. You see all these garages here, they're literally touching the railway tracks. So upgrading this to three tracks would demolish all these properties, some of which was date back to more than 60 and 70 years. And I understand the needs. And if you have this many people living this close to the track, building a third track is not necessarily a more efficient option in the local environment at least. Not to mention that in the New Hyde Park region there are two roads right next to the track and widening this to three tracks would lead to the de demolition of one of the roads and possibly the loss of business and basically property because many properties face these roads, 2nd and 3rd Avenue. Now I believe the line does get a little less dense in surroundings until Mignola. So I'll just go right there. Marion Avenue, there's some garages here, but it's not as bad. But Mineola is where it gets bad again. Because you have Station Road, you have all these big parking garages literally touching the tracks. Adding a third track would, at the very least, make severe modifications to these parking garages. Ah, basically a necessity. Not to mention there are bridges in which the line has to go under, so these will have to be reconstructed as well. So basically the point of this is that as I go through this line, it may seem initially cheaper than building that three mile long tunnel, but in reality, the cost won't be that much different. Now I still believe that the three track tunnel, or the three mile long tunnel rather, will still be more expensive, but based on the public wants, it'll be much more in line with them. Because this will not only still be a severe expense, but it'll cut through many properties. Now in this area right here, just west of Carl Place, it can be relatively easy to upgrade to three tracks. But then again, Carl Place, it'll have to be changed. It'll have to add a new platform and a third track. And right here, there is a park and a school. Like why infiltrate into that? And here especially, adding a third track, you either basically remove all their yards or remove houses. Which one would you want? A, B, or as they see it in the test, neither A nor B. Most people taking a test will probably say neither. Unless they know like the bigger picture. So yeah, Westbury, after Westbury it's not nearly as bad. It's a little more doable to make it into three tracks but the point I'm trying to get across is that not all portions of the existing main line can support three tracks really easily. You'll be cutting through garages not to mention that the Hempstead branch will not have to be upgraded to allow the express trains to run through. So it's really balancing what do you want what do you not want because the three track option may be cheaper 
but it will be hated much more by the local community. Meanwhile, rerouting it onto the Hempstead branch and building the new tunnel will be more expensive, but the public reaction will be a lot more positive. Both have similar capacity. Actually, I may argue that even the southern branch may have slightly more capacity because it's four tracks versus two tracks, as a Hempstead branch is only three miles long and doesn't see much traffic. So that's it on reviewing the main line. So let's zoom out and see from where we have come. So as I was saying all along, it is really hard to distinguish which proposal is better. You have one that is still going to be cheaper, which is just simply upgrading this to three tracks. However, you will be basically antagonists to all the people living along this line and also many of the people using these stations as you will have to be renovated and people will have to go to nearby stations as their existing station is reconstructed. Then you have rerouting the express trains on the Hempstead branch without significant changes in the branch itself. Only Garden City will have to be relocated, but that's nothing compared to the five stations on the existing main line that would have to be reconstructed if a third track were to be created here. This does have the tunnel though, and that does jack up the price. So basically, this summarizes the following question. Is Long Island willing to pay more for a better transportation system? And this just comes down to politics, nothing else. Some people want drastic change, other people want some change, but it's really ironic that some of the conservatives along the line may actually prefer to pay more for the other segment as this has less infiltration on the local communities than building a third track. So it's cost versus wants. Simple economics, right? That's basically what every web you boils down to. Cost versus economics, the ever-longing debate. What is better, what is worse is not clearly defined. I'm just here to give another opinion. So please comment on what you like, what you dislike about this web you. I value all opinions. I want to just learn from doing this. So I sincerely thank you in watching this and I hope I see you guys soon. Thank you so much and goodbye.